mid-rangey in a lot of ways. He's interested in controlling the table. He's got a lot of different ways to both separate out between his point removal um, and his sweep, as well as some powerful cards like Tamayo to just basically kind of take over a table. And what is he trying to do? Well, this is a deck that's targeted, I think, against Delver decks. And as these Delver decks are no longer the same um, deeply aggressive deck as they used to be when they were a Rune Chanter's Pike deck, I think he's well poised to potentially take down these slightly slower Restoration Angel decks. Yeah, he has a lot of awesome mid-range cards. He has the amazing endgame and the Sun Titan Phantasm Image endgame. He has four Planeswalkers, two Gideon, two Tamiyo, four Lingering Souls to protect him. He has Ratchet Bombs, he has Oblivion Rings, Doomblade, Go for the Throat, Day of Judgment, Deadweight, Forbidden Alchemy, and Ponder to find it all, Mana Leak to shore up the weaknesses. This is just a, a deck with a lot of great, great value cards yeah. in it. A lot now, of cheap cards, too, that can help him get there. One of the things he's not doing is he is not running a um, full set of Mana Leaks. He's only got a couple. Basically, to keep an opponent honest, uh, I know that back when I was running blue-white control, and I still kind of am a little bit, I was only running two Mana Leaks because it just felt like it wasn't good enough to run four anymore in a controlling deck. And uh, again, Jeremy Dombek also only running the two. Now, besides these players that are playing to get some wins under their belt and hopefully take down the championship title here in Wor Worcester, um, besides that, we also, we also have another thing that we're going to be giving away, and that is our premium giveaway, which at the end of every game one, we're going to ask a trivia question. Yesterday we gave away eight, I'm uh, sorry, three free months of Star City Games Premium, and uh, today we're going to give away, for this semifinal match, six free months of Star City Games Premium, and then when we get to the um, finals, instead of going with Premium, we're going to be giving the lucky winner a Gen Con badge, which is such an excellent prize. Uh, Four-day Gen Con badge. Yeah. So you get to go to all of it uh, for free. Uh, so there are lots of magic tournaments there, lots of other things to do too. And uh, if you want to win that, we're going to ask you a question during the finals. But before that, we're going to ask you six months, or rather, we're going to ask you a question for six months of premium during sideboarding of this match. So make sure you're watching it. Jeremy Dombeck on six cards, Dave Shields on seven. And it looks like Jeremy is a little happier with his six. And Dave on the opener. It looks like image, image, unburial rights, land, land, land. That's a, the full gamut of, uh, of colors there for Jeremy as well. Wow, that's, uh, that's not a strong six card hand, is it? Well, I mean, he can drop a image on, let's say, a flipped Delver to stem the bleeding, but pretty much what's gonna happen with that image is it's likely gonna trade with a gut shot or a vapor snag really quickly, and uh, I expect Jeremy is just gonna drop it down um, ASAP just to kind of potentially, if he's fortunate, trade with some creature of Dave's should Dave have the unfortunate draw of no removal, which Dave does have uh, two gut shots, three vapor snags, two dismember, um, and then, of course, his ponders and all the rest of his cantrips. Right. And There's now, one of them. Yeah, ponder right now. Great card. Excellent at finding exactly what he needs. He has full knowledge of his opponent's six cards. He has knowledge of his seven cards. And he can just really sculpt a game plan here based around what his opponent has. Now, one of the things we've been seeing a lot of people do that are running um, these, I, I, say, I want to call them the post-Jerry Thompson lists. Um, Dave Shields is one of them, is that... Uh, a lot of people are, are really changing over to go to a one thought score four Gitaxian probe, but uh, I should say Dave Shields is, is not one of them. He is sticking with the three Gitaxian probe, uh, two thought scour. I think that's a, a, a setup that I actually really, really like given the nature of this deck as a um, very heavy snapcaster list because of Restoration Angel. Right, a lot of times. He doesn't want to play that main face Snapcaster, but he still wants to get value out of it, so he has to actually have a an instant in the graveyard to flash back, and Thoughtscour does that so well. Jeremy with an Evolving Wilds, and uh, Dave Shields with a second Ponder. Now, normally that Gitaxian Probe not so great in this matchup, but if he... Sorry, I'm not Gitaxian Probe. Um, that Gut Shot not so great in this matchup, but um, depending on what his hand looks like, he, uh, he might like to have it around. Now, if his hand is unfortunately Geist heavy, those, uh, those phantasmal images look pretty good from Jeremy's side of the board. Right, and uh, Dave does choose to shuffle the land, land, gut shot away, looking for a little more action, finds a Gitaxian probe. That is an old swamp. That, hmm. that, that swamp is an old one. It's a classy swamp. 
Mirage. Yeah. Good eye, good eye. <laughs> so it looks like Dave Shields trying to decide which land to play here. And, oh, going to go with the probe first. And Jeremy has added a land, a Seachrome Coast. So nothing too special going on there. He's looking for something like a Forbidden Alchemy, a Mana Leak, even a Removal Spell, a Lingering Souls, anything. Dave's just going to slowly build up his graveyard, his hand, get to where he wants to be in this game. And Jeremy will give him the time to do it, too. Jeremy Seachrome Coast passes the turn. Dave Enstep Thought Scours. Drawing Vapor Snag. And Dave draws another land. He has no creatures yet. Not even a Snapcaster Mage. He would love to be getting some pressure on Jeremy right now. I mean, the deficit that Jeremy has with the Mulligan um, goes away quickly should the game just draw out. I mean, one card does, oh, there's, a, there's an important card, a Sword of Feast and Famine. That is uh, one of the two one of swords, one Sword of Feast and Famine, one Sword of War and Peace. Yep, and Dave just correctly decides to tap out for that. He knows that Jeremy uh, is unlikely to have a Mana Leak in his deck. Or rather, in his hand. Yeah. Do remember that also both of these players have had access to each other's deck lists. They were able to uh, take a glance at uh, the lists before this match started and uh, give it a, give it a check. So. Yeah. So, Shields knows that um, that Dombeck has very few answers to that sword. Really, one ratchet bomb in the main deck in terms of getting it off the table, and that's it. There's plenty of ways to cook to kill creatures, but no ways to kill swords. So Dave will ponder again, seeing Island, Island, Seachrome. Those will definitely get shuffled away. He has no need of land right now. Though he would take a Moreland Haunt. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Yep, now, uh, if... If Dave could choose what he draws, I would imagine he would love to draw a Snapcaster Mage right here. Go end of turn Snapcaster into Thought Scour, untap, and uh, have the ability to equip and attack. But instead he draws a Gut Shot. His hand Gut Shot Dismember, both very weak against Jeremy Dombeck. Dismember in particular does almost nothing. This member only able, able essentially to either kill a phantasmal image, to help kill a bigger creature yet, like a Sun Titan or an Elishnorn, or to take out a single token in the form of Lingering Souls, so yep. not exciting here. So Dave Thought Scour's main phase and uh, mills a Snapcaster but finds a Restoration Angel. We see a Sun Titan for the first time from Jeremy. Yeah. Would love to live long enough to get that into play. Dave untaps and draws. Ooh, that's a Snapcaster. So now Dave's hand is shaping up. He just added two creatures in the last turn, and that's exactly what he needed. Jeremy just draws another land. I don't think he has any removal spells for this end of turn creature. And here's the Snapcaster. It's going to resolve, and Dave will flashback Thought Scour. Milling Delver, Ponder. Drawing a card, it's a Mana Leak. So now Dave, in great shape, is about to equip the sword, have Mana Leak back up, have Restoration Angel back up. And not quite a hard lock, but still pretty good. What do you discard if you're Jeremy Dombeck here? Do you discard one of those Phantasmal Images? It depends how many lands he has. If he has extra land, I think I think there's an argument for discarding a land. Um, it adds up quick. It does. And especially a deck like Jeremy's, he wants to hit every land drop. He has those four Forbidden Alchemies. He has the big Planeswalkers. He has Elish Norn. And look at this, Dave Shields floating some mana here. Oh boy. So he says, okay, sword trigger on the stack, float two white, two blue. Jeremy has to be scared of that. 
Unburial rights. Saving that one for later. And now with his floating mana, what's he going to do with it? He could Restoration Angel and just play a Ponder here. And that's what he'll do. Dave Shields ponders during the second main, sees Land Land Delver. Those will certainly get shuffled away. Right now, Dave has plenty of creatures. Uh, if he had an Evolving Wild, he might be likely to keep that Delver of Secrets. But he only plays that one. And this is just showcasing the power of Ponder here. Dave Shields has three times this game pondered into two or more lands and just been able to shuffle them away. One of the things that's so scary about the way that the Angel deck versions work, the Restoration Angels are just so able to manipulate the deck for a mid and late game, um, even more than the old decks were able to. Now we're going to see Geist, it looks like. And uh, Dave is well aware. Oh, never mind, he just equips. I was going to say that Dave's aware that Jeremy has two... Uh, two Phantasmal Images, so that was a surprise to me, but no, he's just equipping here. Yeah, that, that probably makes a little more sense. Oh yeah, I'm much happier with that. <laughs> much happier <laughs> with that. Here comes a Phantasmal Image. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to see this attempting to copy the Snapcaster Mage. Yep, for Jeremy to do a little fishy pondering of his own. And I wonder what Dave's thinking about here. Could he be thinking about Vapor snagging his own creature in response? That wouldn't be un that wouldn't be unreasonable, I think. Uh, just giving uh, there you go, have yeah. an angel. How uh, you like it? Dave Shields drops to fifteen. He knows how important the cards are in this race. So Jeremy Dombeck, Phantasm Image, copying Restoration Angel. Just has a ghost quarter and says go. Luckily, Dave has that gut shot. Be able to take out the 3-4 at a moment's notice at the cost of only two life. And that life is not particularly important to him right now. No, not at all. The game has to actually change its tenor completely for that two life to matter. Right, when you're getting beaten down by oh, some titan. Oh, goodness. Wow. wow, that's a sword of war and peace. Equip. And unless, uh, wow, look at that oh, boy. angel. I don't think that uh, Jeremy's going to win this game. 7 8 angel, pro white, pro red, pro black, pro green. When it hits you, win the game. Jeremy here trying to figure out which card to discard still. <laughs> Whatever Jeremy does choose to discard, uh, I'm not so sure that. Um, going to matter too much. Not sure what he can do here. He can Any of his sorcery speed removal won't do it because the Snapcaster waiting in the wings. Gideon Jura, I suppose, would give him a little bit of time if Dave didn't have the mana leak. They, I think the Tamiyo is uh, getting that to resolve. Is that a Forbidden Alchemy? That's, that's a Forbidden fast. Alchemy. Oof. So That's going to find him what he needs for sure. <laughs> and no, he just he, says that's not enough. Packs it in. So the slow draw from both players, only Dave is able to capitalize it, mostly on the back of all those ponders and snapcasters and thought scours. No. Really just allowed him to dig to what he needed. Now, if you're Jeremy, one of the things that you're thinking there when you see that phantasmal image draw is that one of the hard cards for you to deal with from uh, from Dave is the Geist of St. Traft. And you're like, you know what, look at this, I got two answers, so my mulligan hand is not so terrible. Well, on Je Dave's draw, Dave just kind of sat back, took his time, you know, massaged his deck, hmm. tried to figure out what would come from that, and, you know, suddenly, out of nowhere, well, look at this. There is a Snapcaster equipping one of these swords <laughs> that came down earlier. Cobblade. Yeah. yeah. 
And so here we are. We've got a moment before uh, these players finish their sideboarding. Yep. And in this time, we're going to be giving away some Star City Games Premium. And six months of Star six City Games months. Premium. Yeah, I won't use uh, Jacob Van Lunen's terminology for this. He's got his own <laughs> special way of reckoning time sometimes. Um, but what we will talk about is that hashtag right there. You can see right there, SCG Premium. Yep, there it is. That's what you're going to want to make sure you have in your tweet to us in order to be eligible for the prize. Now, the way that this works, we are going to ask you a trivia question. And in response to that, you're going to tweet us the answer. And uh, essentially, one of those lucky people, um, one of those lucky people is going to be um, fortunate enough to get six free months. Yeah and uh, of Star City Games Premium. I think that's an excellent prize. And yeah, and I'm going to ask you guys this question. Now, you have to get the answer in before these players are done with their match. It doesn't matter when, just make sure you use the hashtag SCG Premium and get it in before that. So, in California, yesterday, the World Magic Cup qualifier was held, well, one of them anyway, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was won by a pro player. Uh, who was that pro player? I'm going to give you a hint. It was a member of Channel Fireball, uh, popular player if you want you can look it up on Twitter it's there but which player won the World Magic Cup qualifier okay and I'm gonna give you another hint yeah though, this just is a pretty tough case. one um, this this player is often known by their initials Ooh, so okay that's a very big okay. hint and I understand that's a big hint <laughs> but you know seeing as a uh, this this question might be something that can be harder for some of our players that aren't as tapped into the magic world. Can I give you that extra little hint? You can go back to our sideboarding. Um, sideboarding for Jeremy Dombek. You're down a game. You're you know your opponent doesn't have um, you know a, a permit does have some equipment. Um, I think you're going to have to find that room for that divine offering to come in. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. As, and, as we saw that game, he's very, very weak to those equipment. Yeah, and also I would think that uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is make sure you get room for your negates. One of the most valuable cards I had found in uh, the controlling decks versus various Delver builds was negate, mostly so that you can fight for six mana over the day plus negate in order to protect you from their mana leak. Right, because oftentimes that seven mana is just a little too hard to come by. Yeah. Six, on the other hand, is very doable. Yeah. Now, now some people, um, they actually feel like uh, what they want to do instead is they want to not go for negates in this matchup so that they can have a card like um, Mana Leak in order to try to stop some of the more expensive spells. But um, I don't know, in my experience, it hasn't been as effective as it has been to have negates. So. Well, both players can see the sideboards just like you said, and uh, Jeremy can see that Dave Shields is siding in Consecrated Sphinx. And if there's one thing Negate isn't very good at, it's stopping Consecrated Sphinx. This is true. This is true. However, you know, with the uh, Doom Blades and Go for the Throats, he's only got one of each. Um, you know, that's, I think, one of the paths that he can have to fight that. But with only one of each, and I, I don't see any other instant speed creature removal on the sideboard, he's primarily looking at uh, the sorcery speed stuff with uh, cards like Day of Judgment and Oblivion Ring. Right. Gideon Jura can, uh, can kill a Sphinx in a pinch, though he'll have already drawn four cards. Uh, it's, it's really just a really, it's a really tough card for both of these players to deal with. Jeremy's sideboarding too as well. Now, I have to imagine we'll see him bring in the Surgical Extraction. Uh, it's, it's a card that I really don't, I, well, I used to not like it against Delver at all, but now with the Restoration Angel Snapcaster combination, with the ability for these decks to play for the long game, especially often casting something like six ponders in a game, you have to get rid of those ponders. In effect, I countering I, a Snapcaster. I still struggle with it, honestly, um, because, you know, like, it, it feels as though unless you get more than that, um, that sometimes it's just it's too anemic. The, the subtle advantage of the Snapcaster is, is a is a big deal and at the same time surgical extracting is costing you a full card and it, so like I said I still struggle with that I I know that previously previous to Restoration Angel I didn't like that as a choice now I'm not so sure and I, I don't know if things have changed enough to make it um, the case hmm. yeah I, I definitely used to not like it at all but now I think I think it might have changed so Jeremy on the play both players on seven cards Jeremy two lands go Dave Shields just one right now on the other bracket, Matthew Costa is up game one against Sean Hur. Matthew Costa up game one against Sean Hur. Yep, trying to continue his Delver domination here. And here we see a Ponder gets negated by Jeremy Dombeck. 
probably realizing how the last game went, realized how out-carded he got. Card selection, last game was just everything. Jeremy untaps, plays a Ghost Quarter, plays Lingering Souls. This is a very important card for Jeremy. While Dave Shields does have access to Sword of War and Peace, the Lingering Souls not only can, with its first cast, hold off a flipped Delver, but it also has the ability to really, really answer a Moorland Haunt. Yeah, definitely. The ability of one Lingering Souls to make so many tokens, it just takes a lot for Dave Shields to fight through that. Attacks for two. Here Shields comes down the beat to 18. Down. Dave Shields, you see there with his trusty Consecrated Sphinx in hand. A card we've seen him side in just about every single match. And a mana leak for the second Lingering Souls, which is not flashed back, but a fresh one. And these are the kind of draws that are so scary for the Delver deck. Two Lingering Souls, backed up with a few pieces of removal, a few pieces of counter magic. The game can be over so quickly. And Dave would love to have something like a Restoration Angel here, just to stem the bleeding. Doesn't quite need it yet, but he'll need it soon. In for two more. Well, in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting back for, uh, for Dave to finish his turn. Yep, he has Land, Land, Delver of Secrets, Restoration Angel, Consecrated Sphinx. I think I see a Phantasmal image in there, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it's that or a Vapor Snag. Can't tell. One of the hardest things to do with a deck like Delver is choose to use a Vapor Snag on a token when there are more tokens out. Like in this, these 1-1 one, one spirits, it just feels so awful to use a Vapor Snag or a Gut Shot. There won't be gut shots after board, I don't believe here, but a vapor snag on a lingering souls token. But sometimes that's the thing to do, either to stem the bleeding or to get something through. Right, exactly. It seems like it's you know using an entire card on one quarter of a card, but really, in matchups like this, you can't think about it like that. You just have to do the play that keeps you alive, make the best play available to you. And sometimes you have to do it surprisingly fast. Yeah. You know, if if you let a token live for three turns, that's three damage. Right. Exactly, and that'll definitely add up, and if you're going to do it anyway, hmm. why not get it out of the way early? So, a, a tweet from Aaron Forsyth. Hurry, everyone. Switch back to Sword of War and Peace. Latest instructions. Oprah's Deck Club. <laughs> At Jerry T. Uh, <laughs> and here comes an angel eating up one of these spirits resolves most easily and we're going to see a double flashback I believe. Wow. Boom boom that is five one one spirits facing off against one three four angel and if uh, Dave Shields actually follows Aaron Forsyth's advice <laughs> and uh, has a land and then a sort of worn piece that could be actually particularly devastating for Jeremy unless he has uh, a fast response to it. There's the fifth land tap Delver. Mm, just a Delver he would have loved a sword there No dice, though. Dave Shields only plays one between the main deck and the sideboard. One War and Peace, one Feast and Famine. So Dombeck gets to untap with his five tokens. Looks like he does have a Gideon in his hand. Three mana. The O-Ring. Mana available for a mana leak here. Yep, Day Shields with the Vapor Snag. He can snag his own Angel, but that would mean he's taking six this turn. Take six. One from your own Vapor Snag and five from these tokens. So Day Shields drops to 11. And if things continue as they are, I'm not sure he's going to win this race. End of turn, Vapor Snag. Interesting that he chose to take that extra damage here. Not sure what he's playing around. So 
Delver. Hey. Lips revealing mana leak. Now, if you're wondering what the Oblivion Ring is doing in play, Dave did wait for it to target his Restoration Angel so that it wouldn't sneakily take away his insect. So once it's targeted, then he chose to Vapor Snag. So Dave Shields, Mana Leak, and Angel in hand. Just says go. That gives him the opportunity to have two blockers here. Yeah, and now Jeremy doesn't really have any great attacks. He can trade two of his spirits for two damage, but that doesn't seem very good when your opponent's at 12 life. And yeah, the follow-up attack after that would be trading two of your spirits for zero damage, so right. not so great. Angel. End of turn Angel. Targets it, nothing. Uh, it tar right. Officially it targets the Delver, but it doesn't activate the ability. Right. I mean, if that was a Phantasmal image, then it would be forced to kill the image. This is true. Let's wipe your hand. Look. Oh, Gideon Jura. Mm. And a mana. Mm. Next turn, it'll be protected from a potential mana leak. Yeah, which Jeremy knows Dave has. Draws off the probe. Let's see what he gets. Vapor Snag number three. Now, interesting to note, most players run the full four Vapor Snags. Dave Shields only three. Now, if you're just joining us, I'm Zach Hall, joined by Adrian Sullivan, and uh, we're coming to you live from the top four of the Star City Open Series in Worcester. Dave Shields on your right versus Jeremy Dombeck on your left. Dave Shields up a game. <laughs> Trying to puzzle out a way to beat these spirits plus the Gideon. Jeremy, preparing for his uh, eight mana play of Gideon plus protection from Mana Leak, does use an Evolving Wilds at the end of Dave Shields' turn. Did you say that Dave has another land in his hand? Uh, I think Dave's hand right now is it's Vapor Snag Consecrated Sphinx. Okay. Leak with the there Leak. too, yeah. Right. There's the five. Gideon Jura. The question being, um, you know, is everything open for a potential uh, Consecrated Sphinx coming down? Right. Now, yeah. Gideon Jura in play will eventually kill that Sphinx, but uh, <laughs> that's a lot of cards that'll happen first if that's the thing that ends up happening. Oh wow, Dave Shields did, I think he just drew a Sword of War and Peace, is that right? No, that, that's a Sphinx, he just drew a Snapcaster <coughs> Mage. Now, if Jeremy tries to quadruple block this Angel, that would be a sad day for him. Yeah, I, th I think what we're more likely to see is a double block or a triple block on the insect and a single block on the angel. Jeremy would love to try and use the, the Gideon minus two on that restoration angel. We see a double and he lets the other angel through, which means that a uh, vapor snag can protect the insect. I'm not surprised to see Jeremy only blocking with two. Dave has gone through two of his three Vapor Snags, and uh, if he has the third, that's fine. If he wants to use a Snapcaster on a Snag, that's fine. He just doesn't see the risk in only blocking with two, I think. Usually in a spot like this, you have to block with three just because the, the risk of getting blown out by a Vapor Snag is so high. But in this case, he doesn't have to. Jeremy Dombek with a mystery card in his hand. We didn't see it. He uh, just drew his land, or drew, played his land that we knew he had, and played his Gideon that we knew he had. Manleek Snapcaster Mage in Dave Shield's hands, along with his Consecrated Sphinx. Yeah, just a beastly, beastly hand there. He has answers to anything that Jeremy Dombek tries to do in the form of double Manleek once he gets to six, or single Manleek regardless. I think we're going to see a probe here. Hmm. What you got over there is my guess. Oh, wow. Looks like Ponder. Oh, Ponder. Looking for a land. Because he has not laid one yet this turn. Whiff. Oh, no, it was that a Moreland Haunt. Oh, Moreland. Wow, look at that. that Moreland a... Haunt, Restoration Angel, Thought Scour. That's pretty, pretty solid. I can't think of what he could ask for more. The land he wanted was definitely Moreland Haunt. 
and Restoration Angel, one of the best cards against oh, Jimmy's I, Sorcery Speed deck. I think he's going to um, bury that Angel and then scour it away. Oh, never mind. It looks, he had the order set up to, to do that, but he's changed his mind. He's going to go with Angel and then scour. Yep, he maintains that. Drawing Moreland Haunt. Laying Moreland Haunt. Saying go. So Dave Shields just continues to show us the power of this Delver deck. Seems like he has all the card manipulation, all the card advantage, all the answers. And that was a land that Jeremy was holding, and uh, looks like he has drawn another land, is that correct? Or is that another spell? We'll I can't find quite, out. I can't quite tell. I think that might be a forbidden alchemy there. Oh, that would be that would be pretty solid. Yeah, that's a great draw for Jeremy. He has plenty of mana, just nothing to do with it. Yeah, that is an alchemy. Carefully selecting his mana. And there it is, Forbidden Alchemy. Uh, Jeremy, not concerned with Graveyard Order. <laughs> just, not at all. It does not matter uh, technically in Standard, but I just can't help myself. Jeremy's a pretty new player. I think he, I think he started playing about three, four years ago. Started playing PTQs two, three years ago. We see an image, a Lingering Souls, and a land go to the yard. I think we're going to see Gideon murder an angel. Yep. Angel down, out of heaven, into the graveyard. Is that another alchemy? That wouldn't surprise me if that's what he took. And it looks like we're going to kill that Moreland Haunt with a Ghost Quarter. Wow. So Dave will float a colorless mana. Jeremy not wanting his opponent to have any spirit tokens. Little does he know that Dave Shields has way better things to be doing with his mana right now. Here's a Lingering Souls. This uh, flashback does resolve. It's wow. a bunch of creatures out there. And in for one, Dave, uh, Dave dropping to a, a 11 for life. I'm surprised he didn't take the opportunity to use that mana leak there. I wonder what he's saving it for. Um, well, right here, I expect that uh, he's asking himself, does Jeremy have one of the two mana leaks or one of the two black removal spells? Um, do I just drop this Sphinx into play? There are four cards that could stop me, if I remember correctly. And of course, Dave Shields did not draw that Restoration Angel because the Ghost Quarter shuffled that land away. Now, he could have chosen to draw it, but I think he was correct in getting the land. Or actually, um, perhaps, I, I forget if, uh, the act, if the search itself is mandatory, but you don't have to find things. I'm just going to have uh, one of our judges out there figure out what that is for us, and we'll let you know in a moment. I feel like there was a... Uh, uh, okay, it's Path to Exile that is the one that makes the shuffle happen. And look at that. Wow. There it is. He uh, Dave goes for it. And right there, I think that might have been the crux of the game. Um, the Consecrated Sphinx comes down and is immediately finished off. Yeah, super, super important for Jeremy. And look at this, Gideon actually on the aggressive. Gideon coming in. That's never a good thing for the Delver player. <laughs> now, originally Gideon was going to be a card that was going to have power and toughness equal to the loyalty it had. Hmm. Um, but that took too much text, so... <laughs> <laughs> These Planeswalkers already have a ton of rules text on them. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the shuffling is contingent on the searching with Ghost Quarter. It was a path to exile that made the search happen regardless. So, um, back to this... Oh, Pack to Exile is the same? Okay. So Dave Shields drops to three, does not chump block anything. And draws a Geist of St. Trapped for his turn. Geist makes a good blocker right now. Uh, he does have a Restoration Angel in hand. Um, is there a Vapor Snag in Dave Shields' graveyard? I, I believe he has one in his graveyard. So between the Snapcaster and the Restoration Angel, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't think he has an angel in hand, actually. I think I think his hand is Geist Mana League right now. Okay. Uh, that's right, because the angel got murdered. Uh, it was after it came down a second time, and the other angel was shuffled away. Yeah, Geist. Here comes the Snapcaster. Geist as a blocker. Ooh, I'm blocking Geist of St. Draft. And flashback on a, uh, a certain Forbidden Alchemy. Oh, yeah. Jeremy Dombeck sees land, 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 land. Wow. At least he didn't draw any of those. It was <laughs> four in a row. And, you know, this is one of the downsides to playing this Esper deck. You just have to play so many land. So often you get flooded out in the late game like we saw yesterday with Tim Wegman. Yep, makes it a creature. Comes in. Geist has to chomp. Geist of St. Traft down? Yep. <laughs> Dave Shields falls to two. One swing away from death. Yeah, Dave Shields draws his second Sphinx. Second consecrated Sphinx in his hand. We'll see if he can find a way out of this one. Leak. Wow, mana leak. And that's all she wrote. On to uh, game three. Dave Shields looks not happy with that turn of events. No. That... Look at that face. <laughs> oh, he is not happy. <laughs> that one go for the throw on his consecrated Sphinx was just huge, like you said. That was the game. If Dave Shields was allowed to draw two cards and then untap with his Sphinx, I think it would have been over. I think so, too. Also key by Jeremy Dombeck that I think a lot of players would overlook is that Ghost Quarter on the Moreland Haunt made him shuffle away the Restoration Angel. Yeah. Shuffle away the Thought Scour. Had him draw a few blanks, and that was really all he needed. So do you think these players will be changing anything about their sideboard for Game 3? Dave being on the play, Jeremy on the draw. Maybe timely reinforcements for Jeremy, something like that. On the draw, uh, a timely does have a little bit more value um, for Jeremy by far. He knows he's playing against a Geist deck, and a timely, if your opponent hits you with, say, a Delver early, um, that's going to be a fast clock, and a timely is two more attacks from a Delver in order to come back, as well as being able just to stop a Snapcaster from being able to be on the aggressive and make also the, um, the Geist have to sit back. So I actually do like Timely after the sideboard. Now, one thing to, to think about, though, is that those Timelys become far less valuable as the game drags on and the cards like Restoration Angel and Sphinx take over. Right. It seems like Jeremy knows that Dave is going big. He saw the Sphinxes. He saw the Restoration Angels. He knows about those. I'm not sure that we'll see him. I think maybe against... Uh, a less experienced blue-white Delver opponent. Jeremy might bring them in. Someone who wouldn't be bringing in the Sphinxes wouldn't be bringing in anything like Sun Titan, Frost Titan. But Consecrated Sphinx just embarrasses timely reinforcements, frankly. Yes. Now, if you're just joining us, we're coming to you in the top four of the Star City Open in Worcester. I'm Zach Call. He's Adrian Sullivan. Hello, and, hello. Uh, we are... Covering this match, are uh, these players going to a game three? Dave took game one. Jeremy stole game two. Not stole. That that's not a good word. I would I say I would say he, he earned him. game two. Yeah, I mean, he his deck has only the eight cards. Uh, sorry, the four cards that um, would have gotten him out of that situation, which is Manalik, Doomblade, Go for the Throat. Two copies of that Manalik, and. He had the one, and he found uh, the other just shortly thereafter, so... Right. Now, sort of an interesting card in Jeremy Dombeck's deck, one dead one. It's just uh, not a card I would have expected to see standard play. Well, actually, Deadway has been seeing a lot more play in the Sun Titan builds of these decks. Remember that when Sun Titan brings a dead weight into play, it doesn't actually do the traditional targeting. The aura just gets on something. Right. Which means that Sun Titan dead weight can actually kill an endless stream of Geist of St. Traft should, uh, should you have some sort of strange Geist engine. <laughs> Perhaps a Geist on a soul foundry. Something, something like, like that. that. 
Looking at the legacy, of course. Or you are simply poorly timing your um, activation of Mimic Fat so that uh, <laughs> you always fall prey to the Sun Titan. <clears throat> You'd think after the first time that wouldn't happen, but well, we've seen stranger things. You know, it's just you might want the game to be more exciting. Right. I see uh, Noah, Noah Schwartz here amongst many other people. Oh, wow. Noah, a uh, top eight competitor um, with uh, Team Mythic's green deck. Not so long ago, I was happy to be a part of that crew working on that deck. Um, and Noah, previously from Chicago, now out here uh, going to school, I believe. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, is. So, uh, he is. Not sure where. Yeah, you know, the, I, I didn't see him at first, but then I spotted the beard. It's a dead giveaway. <laughs> For a second, I thought I saw Brad Nelson, but that is not Brad Nelson. Oh, I do see the resemblance there. <laughs> For those of you who are at home, unable to see all of the people that are suddenly filing into the room, we're getting rapidly close to the Legacy Open's beginning, and uh, registration has just started for the Legacy Open. If you are in the Worcester area, you should run, not walk, to the nearest vehicle, and then get here quick to get involved in my favorite constructed format of all time, Legacy. Yeah, you have about an hour to get here, hour to sign up, and uh, the prizes are great, 2400 bucks to first. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously standard, 500 people, that's a lot of people. That makes for a hard tournament. Usually our legacy events are much smaller, and uh, one of the things, if you are a seasoned legacy veteran, one of the things you can expect to do, come here and play against people who are likely to be less experienced than you. I mean, that's just the way it works when it comes to, uh, to legacy. There are going to be people who are really, really up on their legacy game, but a lot of people, they're going to be playing a deck that someone gave them, and that's going to be how they're going to run it. Exactly. I mean, when you're playing Rug Delver for the first time, that's a hard deck to play. That's one of the hardest. You have to time so many things right to win matches with that deck, and if you don't, it's, it's very tough. Yeah. I mean, I think I uh, mentioned yesterday playing against Rug Delver, I'm on the play, and they ponder turn one, and I wasteland them on my turn two with my one land to their no permanence. And me choosing to wasteland them down to no permanence with me having one land, that was a mistake that cost me my match at the last Rest of the Games Open series I was at. That's the kind of wonderful thing I love about Legacy, is just that level of detailed choices. Now back to this match at hand in this format. Standard, Dave Shields opens up with Island into Ponder. Yep, he sees Plains, Manalik, Manalik. And we'll see if he chooses to keep these. The ineffectiveness of Manalik uh, versus Jeremy going late was made pretty obvious last game. That said, it's still a pretty powerful card in the early game. We'll see what he chooses to do with these. Decides to keep them. And Jeremy? matches Dave's Island and passes the turn. Trying to place that island. I'm not exactly sure. Is that a Portal 1 island? Portal 1. Am I right? Maybe Portal 2. Moreland hot from Dave Shields. And I like this Jeremy uh, maintaining a consistent <laughs> land art something that uh not a lot of people pay much attention to glacial fortress on both sides i think particularly in a land of probes it can matter definitely if you accidentally play the wrong land uh after your opponent probed you you give them some free information there yeah i mean i definitely had an opponent um, probe me at one of the more recent tournaments and then write down which kinds of lands <laughs> because I did have one off land on purpose because I was trying to figure out if I wanted to change that land. It was for my own deck building purposes for later. And he was like, aha! <laughs> I get you with your own land. Yeah, I, I believe he said, one Japanese beta island I see. <laughs> to which I, I laughed inside. But so Dave Shields passes the turn, two mana leaks in hand, two and Geist of St. Traffs in hand. He's just waiting for the right moment to use these. Yeah, alchemy at the end of the turn. Uh, Jeremy then untaps and ponders. We see Gideon Jura land and I think a land. 
Leaves all that on top. Manalik in Jeremy's hand. Meanwhile, next to me, Zach Hall is dutifully going through all of the Portal Islands. I think he has found it, though. Portal 2, very close. Very uh, close. So Dave Shields draws Snapcaster Mage. You can see the barest hint of the uh, little star symbol, which is what uh, made me kind of think that that might be that what it was. Can't really see much of Jeremy's hand. All Jeremy has a mana leak. Ooh, okay. He's got a mana leak. Mana leak and a day of judgment is what you're saying? Okay. Perhaps, perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> I had to do one last in there. Perhaps not, perhaps. Geist. And Dave Shield's not playing a land before he plays this Geist. Maybe trying to sign. Oh, huh. End of the turn, alchemy. Now, what do you think the the Geist before the land means? Baiting a attempt at counterspell, um, saying, you know, hey, you uh, you can stop this, and then I will be completely open. Yeah, I think so too. Jeremy does not fall for it. Needs to forbid an alchemy. Wants to find. Some mana, it looks like, with the speed of which he took something over all those powerful cards. Are we going to see an image? Image, three mana up. And guys down. We'll see if Jeremy flashes back this Forbidden Alchemy here. Nope, just says go. Respects the power of Consecrated Sphinx. Does not want to walk into that. Sea Chrome Coast for Dave. Fun uh, little question for you. What is uh, one of the few clones which won't invoke the legend rule? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, Sakashima the oh, Imposter. Oh boy. Not really a clone, doesn't take the name, keeps its own name. <laughs> Here's another Geist. I'm sure all the EDH players out there got that immediately. Sakashima, um, a card I have played and constructed a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> These are things you don't tell people, Adrian. <laughs> hey, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of Sakashima. Sakashima is a house. So Dave Shields resolves his Geist of State <clears throat> Trap. Jeremy's main face decides to go for a ponder here. Keeps him on top, it looks like. If Dave Shields is able to uh, start attacking with a Geist, that's going to be a pretty rough situation for Jeremy. Wait, what's this? Land first. <laughs> <laughs> he got Dave Shields' hopes up. Safety first, kids. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, uh, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Dave Shields has not had an opportunity to use either Mana League. <clears throat> and uh, as the game goes later and later, he's going to have less and less of an opportunity. Jeremy Dombeck already with three with six lands in play. I have to say, those are the classiest spirit tokens I've seen perhaps ever since uh, since spirits have become a, a popular part of magic. Hmm. That just looks so slick. It's Casper. He's so friendly. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> and we see uh, two mana here. Snapcaster main phase, finding a ponder. Yep, keeping the Mana Leak mana open, keeping Moreland Haunt mana open. And we'll see what Jeremy does about this. He does have a negate in his hand, and as we saw in game two, he is willing to fight over these ponders. Now, here's the thing about this kind of fight. What this fight says is, if you want to actually go through the fight, tap down, and then perhaps I'll untap and do something really cruel. Right. And Dave is not having that. No. <laughs> He's he, like, you win, you win, you got it. Negate, you got it. He does not <laughs> want to mana leak a negate and leave himself tapped out. There's no way he can do that. Jeremy untaps. Look at that very aggressive ghost corpse. Pushed out there. Yeah. Pulls it back on his own turn. No. On, his, on his own turn, it's for tapping mana, but there we go. There it is. And, uh, nope, never mind. Wait, wait. Got maybe another play to think about. Right, he looks again. One, two, three. Is this going to be the first Lingering Souls? Ooh, timely. timely. Look at that one life differential. <laughs> it won't take very much for Dave Shields to change that to a zero life differential. No, but also Dave Shields knows that, or rather, uh, 
Dombek knows that Dave Shields probably doesn't have gut shot. He won't be dismembering his own token. It happens. That is uh, six life, three one ones, and uh, yeah. <laughs> That's just a huge swing, isn't it? It's, and the thing about that, we talked about this before, um, in a different moment in the game, that card would be completely dead. Right. Even if it produced the tokens and the life, it would still be dead because in a different moment in the game, that would be what the game isn't even about anymore. Dead weight afterwards, trading that Snapcaster for a ghost. And Dave Shields has two flying spirits, Jeremy Dombeck, three ground pounding soldiers. You know, I always rooted for the evil ghosts against Casper. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything here. In for two. Let the viewers decide what that means. <laughs> Jeremy Dombeck falls to 23. Dave Shields, Delver of Secrets. Insect time. Jeremy untaps. Draws his card. It immediately goes to the back of the hand. Take three. Who is the beatdown? It's well, actually it's an open question. Um, it looks like Dave Shields, even without a flip, is going to be doing more damage. But uh, the Jeremy's soldiers don't really interact well with Dave's spirits, so here they come. Yeah, and here comes the Lingering Souls. Flashback. Dave Shields can't fight over that. And now he's got some flyers of his own. Spirits everywhere. Five power. <coughs> now, if Dave Shields cast a mana leak right there, I'm not so sure that Jeremy could afford to pay. I think you're right. I don't know if Dave thought about it, though. I would be willing to bet Dave thought about it. <laughs> so Dave's hand right now, Manalik, Manalik, Restoration Angel, Delver of Secrets. Now, Dave is on the precipice of real danger from Jeremy. Um, one of the things that can happen is one more land from Jeremy, and suddenly the two Forbidden Alchemies in the yard will become active and uh, that could be rough. We see Dave attack with three spirits. It looks like Jeremy is just accepting the damage, saying, let's close this game out. Let's end this game. Yeah, he wants to race right now. 209 life for Jeremy. <laughs> I mean 20. <laughs> false alarm, false alarm. <laughs> Dave was suddenly really frightened. 209 life. That is tough for a Delver deck. <laughs> 20, fine, 30, maybe. 209, not a chance. Oh, give, me, give me some time here. I'm going to need some more than hot tokens, he says. Oh, uh, Delver. And uh, Jeremy untaps. I see a leak from Dave Shields. Is there a Sphinx leak? I think it's leak, leak, restoration angel right now for Dave Shields. And Dave would love to flip those Delvers. Jeremy thinking about the danger of an angel. And it looks like he's willing to slow the game down a little bit. Uh, he didn't block before. Oh, never mind. Wow. Maintaining the, maintaining the speed of the game that he saw previously with um, no blocks before signaling that he was going to go aggro, and he maintains that. Things can turn on a dime here. Imagine we get an instant from Dave Shields, and suddenly with Angel, Delver, Delver, plus those spirits... That is a total of 12 potential damage that Dave could have in the air next uh, next turn. Right, and imagine if that instant is something relevant, like a negate, like a ponder, a mana leak. A dissipate. A dissipate. <clears throat> and Dave thinking hard about this, trying to figure out why Jeremy uh, is attacking with all of his creatures, ultimately decides to block with one Delver. Takes four, falls to 13. Are we going to see another Lingering Souls? Wow, that would be huge. And the seventh land. Leak, Angel, something. Sphinx? Leak. Leak, Leak, Angel? Leak, Leak, Angel. Okay. Which is why I was saying earlier, I'm, su I'm surprised uh, Dave didn't try and leak that last Lingering Souls. Maybe try and represent a Consecrated Sphinx. But he lets it resolve, and, and we'll uh, see if he Moreland haunts at That turn. Delver is going to potentially become another spirit. Now, one of the things Jeremy can do here 
Jeremy, because of his lingering souls, can really afford to push things onto the table because later, if a day of judgment happens, he can have that lingering souls hanging back or he can keep pushing over the top to just continue to have attackers. Whereas Dave's Moreland Hunt does run out of, uh, of fuel. Right now, it is in fact empty. That's all the spirits that he has access to for now. Right. Dave reveals oh. a third mana leak. Wow. So now he has three mana leaks sitting in his hand, but a little, well, the board presence is pretty much even right now. Seven power to six power, six toughness to six toughness. Dave, though, three mana leaks in hand. I feel like Dave has to slow it down. He's not winning this race. Um, he's going to have to hold back stuff on defense in order to, to make this work out. Yeah, I think he'll certainly hold the Delver of Secrets back. Question is, how many spirits? Looks like just two. Jeremy takes just two. Yep, falling to 18. And now Dave will just say go, sitting on triple mana leak, Restoration Angel. Double mana leak feels a lot like um, Force of Will. <laughs> You're like, uh, I got your spell. <laughs> low, low cost of two cards. I got it. I wouldn't be surprised if these mana leaks eat flashed back forgot forbidden alchemies. Yeah, uh, I think Dave would be happy to trade one for one with those at this point in the game. Absolutely, I'd be ecstatic. Yeah. If you're just joining us, I'm Zach Hall. He's Adrian Sullivan. Hello, and we are deep in a game three versus Jeremy Dombeck and Dave Shields. Right now we have four spirits and two soldiers facing off against four spirits and an insectile aberration. Right now Jeremy's slowing the game down, just wants to sit on his forbidden alchemies because he's finally drawn that seventh land. And just feels like he can win this long game here. Dave Shields though will be undeterred. He'll probably keep attacking with his two spirits. Oh, three this three time. Three now. Getting a little more aggressive. Maybe emboldened by Jeremy's lack of attack. It's a good word. Thank emboldened. You. I like it. I read a letter of the dictionary every day. And we see three spirits trading for three spirits. So the board simplified a little bit. Spirit soldier soldier versus spirit 3-2 flyer. The tempo of the game shifting back to Dave. And I mean that word colloquially. I'm not trying to be technical with my jargon here. <laughs> Dave, two Restoration Angels in hand. I think we're going to see a man leak. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll trade this away. He knew it was happening. Jeremy seemed like he knew it was <coughs> happening. Eight. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Gideon Jura. Wow. Uh, do you force a will this with double man leak? Wow, you know, I'm not sure. If Dave had six lands up, I would say no and just play a, a Restoration Angel. But five lands up, I think he might have to. If Dave does double Mana Leak, Jeremy can uh, follow up then with a Lingering Souls flashback from the yard. Right. Well, if he mana leaks, he'll probably pay three. But I'm saying if he... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're correct. Pardon me. And Gideon resolves. Dave unwilling to get rid of two mana leaks in order to stop it. We're going to see end of turn Angel here. Oh. Boom. Surprise. From the clouds. Ponder. Dave wanting to find a removal spell for that spirit. If he can remove that spirit, then that means he can do seven to Gideon. Right. Looks like a shuffle. Yep, we'll see what he can pull off a random card here. Dave would uh, love just about anything but a land here. Vapor Snag, Thought Scour, Sword, Ponder, Snapcaster. Not sure what that was. 
I still see the two leaks. What else we got? Two leaks. Geist of St. Trift? Something. Here come all of the creatures. Looks like a spirit hops in the way of an angel and four to Gideon Girard, dropping down to four loyalty. So Gideon will be able to assassinate a creature if it so chooses. Oh, looks like it was an Evolving Wilds. The one of Evolving Wilds in the deck, which I think you've convinced me, Zach, is a really good choice by Dave. Yeah, it seems like each time he draws it, the opportunity cost is not very high, and the potential upside is just huge. So now Jeremy, eight mana at his disposal. Forbidden Alchemy in the yard, Lingering Souls in the yard, a lot of options. In come soldiers. Dave cannot block, drops to 11 life. And Jeremy's gonna flash back that Lingering Souls, it looks like. Oh. Ratchet Ooh. Bomb. Wow. Ratchet Bomb is pretty okay. He says, attack me, guys. Shows some patience with that Gideon, doesn't choose to minus two on the, on the Restoration Angel like I think a lot of players would. Respects the possibility of another angel. And Dave here is uh, getting an eighth mana into play. This means that in theory, um, if he draws a land, for example, he would have nine mana later on for a Sphinx plus mana to play, pay for a mana leak. Right. It also means he can cast Angel and Double Leak. Looks like they're asking the judge a question right now. Try and figure out what that is for you. Now, if you're Dave Shields, you would love a Consecrated Sphinx. You would love another Angel. You would especially love a Snapcaster Mage. One Snapcaster gone already from Dave's deck. He only has three left available to him. They're somewhere in there. Oh, and this is a Ghost Quarter on the Moreland Haunt. Dave searches up an island, further thinning out his deck. Ten lands already gone for it. Is that a um, Three Kingdoms Island? What is where's that? Uh, APAC, I want to say. Oh, APAC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. That or Euro. I was. I think you're right on the APAC. It's the Asian fishing boat. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was thinking Three Kingdoms. Dave only with eleven lands left in his deck, so he's drawing pretty live right now. End Angel. Of turn, Angel. Using his floated mana. That's why it, it looks like he's tapping three for that. He floated one off Ghost Quarter. Leak. And Dave does not fight over that. Wow. So, so basically, Dave says, okay, if, if you have one of your two leaks, you have one of your two leaks. I'm just going to go for this. And wow, Dave draws a Sword of Feast and Famine. Ouch. Talk about live draws, that's a pretty good one. Now unfortunately uh, for Dave, he is forced to come after uh, Negate, which is gonna get leaked. Yeah, I think so. I can't see how he can not leak this here. Sitting with two leaks in his, in his hand versus an opponent with no board. No hand, I mean. And yep, there's the leak. He equips, he's forced to attack Gideon. We see the explosion. Yep, the tokens yep. all go away. 
And now we Getting have it at one. And I think we're going to see a flashback of Forbidden Alchemy uh, during the main phase for Jeremy, unless he top decks something awesome. And then Gideon say, come at me one more time. Yeah, I think so. Jeremy still has, I, I want to say, one his, lingering souls in his, in his yard. One, two... Lingering Souls. Yep. I believe that's his last Lingering Souls. Two left in the deck, but none left in the yard. <clears throat> and uh, must attack Gideon is something to think about, or alternately hit you to five and have two blockers so that if you come back, hit you to dead. Right. And he says, let's go aggro. And, oh boy. Just has a Lingering Souls handy. Or not Lingering Souls, a Forbidden Alchemy handy. Wow, so it takes Lingering Souls. And soul. casts another Lingering Souls. So Dave Shields. Oh, goodness. Needs something big here. Sword of War and Peace would be pretty good. Yeah, it would. But that's a Geist of St. Trap. I don't think that's going to do it. Dave Shields, head in his hands, trying to figure out a way to win this game. Three Lingering Souls is just such a tough thing to fight through for the Blue-White Delver player. Yeah, you know, if that sword was a war and peace, I think this game would be a little different. Jeremy Dombeck still at a healthy 18 life. In reviewing um, some of the previous events last night, I know that, Jer uh, that Jerry T, oh, we got Geist on the table, that Jerry T basically said that Sword of Feast and Famine was a, a card he chose basically because the deck slowing down as it did was getting weaker against ramp decks, and so Feast and Famine was a way to make the ramp matchup a little less problematic. Hmm. Um, but here we see this is not ramp. Two Forbidden Alchemy still in Jeremy's yard. One mana leak hanging out in Dave Shield's hand. Another flashback on Lingering Souls. Six tokens out there. Four fresh, four, uh, two new. And Jeremy trying to decide what to do with his Gideon. And it looks like they'll all turn sideways. Dave going to be forced to chump lock that Gideon. Will get to eat a token. But is going to fall to three life in the process, or sorry, two life in the process. And Glacial Fortress for Jeremy. Just Says lays it out there. And that's it. It's Dave Shields concedes. Jeremy Dombeck wins two to one over Dave Shields in what was a very, very close match.